Hello everyone. Today we are going to discuss the solution for question 8 from the recently completed Pure Math 1 paper 9709-13, paper 1 there in 3, May June 2025. Uh, I have received requests to do question 8, right, which is related to uh, circular measure. So uh, let's just go through uh, the question. And then, uh, and then the solution. All right. So, question eight: The diagram shows a square A, B, C, D, where each side has length twelve. Okay, you can see it here. Uh, this is a square A, B, C, D. Each side is length twelve. Points E and F lie on side B, C, and C, D. Right, respectively, and are such that B, E is one third B, C, and D, F is one third B, C. So here, it means that the length from B to E is one third of uh, the entire length of that side. And so since we already know that uh, 12, right, the, the side BC is 12, one third of that would be 4 for BE and also uh, the same uh, ratio here for DF. So we know that the length of DF is 4 CM and the length of BC, BE sorry, is 4 CM as well. And we should label as such, right? Whenever you have a problem like this, where, the, where a labeled diagram is provided and additional information is given that is not readily available in the diagram, you should actually add it to the diagram so that you can see better what you're working with, okay? So this is why it's important to not only look at the diagram, but also read the description of the diagram, okay? All right, next. The REF is part of a circle with center A, okay? so. Uh, that means here what we have is a sector. Okay, if EF is the arc of a circle, the center A, then AE and AF are radius lines, and therefore, if you have two radius lines connected uh, with an arc, right, you have a sector. So you can see AEF is the sector of a circle. All right, next, the shaded region is bounded by this arc EF and the line segment EC and FC. Okay, so this is the shaded region all right uh so i think uh, all the information that we need for the first few questions uh, are already there okay so let's uh, proceed question part a show that the size of angle eaf is 0 0.923 sorry 0 0.9273 radians correct to four significant figures all right so uh, whenever you see a question like this you immediately know that this is going to be a calculated question uh, because uh, they expect you to get a long decimal, okay, and then they want you to round it. Um, and because they already give you an answer here, that means uh, you will know whether or not you get this one correct. Okay, it's very easy to get wrong or right. So it's so it's very easy to know whether you did it wrong or right. So let's go ahead and do that. Size of angle EAF. All right. So EAF. So one of the things you can notice is that this uh, diagram is symmetrical, right? So uh, it's symmetrical along the line AC, for example, right? So uh, we know that the length AE and EF will be the same, and also the, uh, the length BE and DF is the same. So we can say that this right triangle here that you see here, BAE or ABE, right triangle ABE and right triangle ADF are similar triangle right? that means the angles here and this angle here would be the same angle and um, and so all we need to decide is uh, we want to find the angle eaf so what we do is we take uh, 90 degrees right which is you know the, the angle of one corner is of a square right 90 degrees minus twice this angle right twice this angle and so uh since we already know what 90 degrees is, 90 degrees, 90 degrees. So all you need to find is what is the expression for this angle. So uh, this is a right triangle because of the square. It, this corner here will be a right angle. And so uh, we already know these two lengths. So uh, in terms of a right triangle, right, if this is our named angle, then this would be the opposite side and this will be the adjacent side. So uh, we can then use so, in this case, it will be a tangent. 
So, we can call this angle inverse tangent of 4 over 12, right? So, angle BAE, angle DAF, same size. Here, inverse tangent 4 over 12, or you can write that as inverse tangent 1 over 3. Now, usually what I'll tell my student is don't evaluate this in decimals yet. Just keep it as it is. We will then calculate it later together with um, uh, the others so that we can get uh, the most accurate value in the end. Okay? So, we now know that this angle here, right, this angle here is inverse tangent 1 over 3. We're going to keep it that way for, for now. So, the angle EEF, we can then say uh, it's 90 degrees or in radian, that will be 5 over 2. So, 5 over 2 minus twice this then, right? So, angle EEF is 5 over 2 minus twice this angle. And then you press your calculator, right? Your calculator, you can actually just press it directly for this one. Make sure you you manage to, uh, you know, key in the expression uh, to match this as much as possible, right? With all the brackets and everything. And when you press the equal sign, you get this long decimal. Now, uh, since the answer is already known, 0 0.9273, right? Then it is not enough to write two four significant figures because part of the thing that they want to test you for is your ability to round. Because this is already given, you should not write 0 0.9273. Instead, you should write more. You should try to write. Uh, you should try to write at least two. Uh, at least two more significant figures than what they ask for. So here they want four significant figures. So you should write at least 0 0.927295, for example. Okay. Um, so uh, the reason is because they want to see the value that you obtain can be rounded to 0 0.9273. And so if you just write 0 0.9273, they will not see the source of the rounding. Because part of the concept they are testing is the, your ability to round correctly. You must show the source of this rounding. And since, since if you do this correctly, you should get 0.9272952, da, 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 in your calculator, then they will look for this long decimal. Okay? So my advice is that at least two, at least two more decimal places, or at least two more significant figures than the one they asked for. And then you write down the final answer which is uh, 0 0.9273 in four significant figures. Okay? <clears throat> All right, so this is this one is very simple. You can get it very easily because it can be obtained easily uh, and be checked uh, with the answer because the answer is provided. So if you don't get something that rounds to 0 0.9273, then you know you did not do it correctly. Okay? So it's very easy to know if you did it right or if you did it wrong. All right. Let's move on to part B. All right. In part B, they ask you to find the perimeter of the shaded region. So this is our shaded region. Okay. And uh, we already know this angle. Right? It's 0 0.9273 radian. And so the shaded region is built by the length EC, the length FC, and also this arc. So we need to find the values of all three. Uh, the good thing is that we already know the length of FC and EC, right? And they are both HCM. So all we need to find is the arc length. So the arc length is uh, radius, okay? Radius times the angle in radian. We already have the angle in radian, so now we need to find the radian. Now, because this is a right triangle, okay, we can then, then just use Pythagoras theorem to find the radius. So it will be 12 square plus 4 square result of that you square root and you get square root of 160 I'll, i usually just keep it like this for now don't want to mess up the uh, decimals yet all right and then just use it in our calculation all right so arc length is square root 160 times now because this is given in part a you will just use it as it is okay 0 0.9273 and then um, uh and for now because this is not the answer we're looking for we're going to keep it like this first okay and then we'll just uh, do the calculation for the perimeter. So, perimeter is 8 plus 8 plus the arc length that we found. At this point, then press your calculator and get the decimal answer. In this case, because they're not really asking for the rounding or anything, you can just immediately round uh, uh, the answer that you get from the calculator to three significant figures. And so, in three significant figures, you should get 27.7. 
centimeters. Okay, here's the thing. All right. Part C. Part C. They want the area of the shaded region. If you look at the shaded region here, uh, it's not in a geometrical shape that we are familiar with, and so we can't directly try and use the measurements that we know in order to find the area. However, we can do subtractive um, calculation. For example, we already know how to find the area of a square, for example, right? the area of a square. Um, and then we also know how to find the area of the right triangle. And we also know how to find the area of a sector. So we will we'll use those. It will use those uh, in order to find the area of the shaded region. So the area of shaded region right, is the area of the square minus the area of the two triangles right here, minus the area of the sector. So once we get that, we have subtracted all the area that we don't need and we'll, we'll be left with the shaded region. So the square is very easy to find. The area of the triangle is also very easy to find because they are right triangles. Uh, the area of the sector, we just use the formula half r square theta and theta must be in radian, which we already know. So all the information that we need are all available. All we need to do is just carefully substitute the values in uh, to the formula and then press the calculator. And when you press the calculator, please press carefully, put brackets wherever you need uh, in order for you to not make a mistake in um, the calculation, right? So if you do that carefully, you should get your shaded area to be 21.8 if you round it to three significant figures. And that's it. It's very simple. And if you do get uh, the, the answers that you see here for the perimeter, 27.7, and for the area shaded, uh, area of the shaded region, 21.8 centimeters squared, uh, then you have done a very good job.